by then someone from Orish Club and the care will be here. If not, we go to a song in tribute by Beverly Grant. And if such a person is still not here, we do the eulogy by Mrs. Elaine Simpson. to Ms. Rel from Eileen, that's her niece. Aunt Rel was kind-hearted, fun-loving, and adventurous. She was a no-nonsense person and a real disciplinarian. I remember Aunt Rel from my younger days, growing up down a yard. Down a yard for who didn't know that was where her, her mother and father lived. 
My sister Yvonne, now deceased, and my cousin Mervis were the only children in the house. At Christmas time, we would sleep in the same bed, anxiously peeping out now and then to see if Santa Claus would come and fill our stockings with goodies. As children, we really believe in Santa Claus. But one morning, we caught Aunt Rel, Aunt Hazley, and Aunt Vissi filling our stockings with goodies. Oh, how we love them for that. Aunt Rel never misses a birthday. I distinctly remember when I turned 12, she gave me a book on becoming a woman. Some thought that that book was too mature for me, but that book helped me to shape my values and characters as a young lady growing up. Aunt Rel was an ardent reader and would be falling down reading books and also her Bible. Mills and Booms were her favorite and Grace Livingston Hill. Aunt Rel loved reading. And must, she must be grieving these days when children don't read anymore. It's all about social media. But these were romance novels and letter for Christian romance. When I became a teenager, I began to read these books myself. I would sneak away in the study room and took away books off the shelves, read them and replace them without her knowing. Aunt Rel cherished her books. Aunt Rel loved to be on holidays, especially potato pudding and toto. And we as girls would have helped her. I cannot forget how she yelled at me, hurry up child. Whenever she sent me for something, I should be right back quickly. Even though I didn't realize it then, she was teaching me to do things quickly. And sure, it has certainly paid off for me. How can I forget the many Saturdays, dance party, she would go to Mandeville and buy the latest record, played it on the record player. Oh, it was such a fun. Dancing to the skia and cherry oh, cherry oh, baby. Aunt Rel was adventurous. She was a teacher by profession and a very good one indeed. But didn't teach at Rose Hall all age all her days. She went to different places. As children, we would, get to we would get to take part of the adventure because she would come for us on holidays, take us, take up and spend time with her. We went up in forests, Sandy Bank, Rock River, in Clarendon. Rock River always stand out in my mind. Because on our way, we stop in Maypen to change bus, then eating peanut butter for the first time. It was so delicious. And today, I still love peanut butter. It was a very good experience. As I grew older, we went our separate ways to high school and college and into a career, career of teaching following her footsteps. The visits were not many, but we kept writing each other. I got married in the late, 90, in late 70s and had my first son, Mick. Aunt Rel spent three weeks with me and baby Mick. She was a good company for me as we would talk a lot. I migrated in the late 80s and we never lost contact. My two eldest children came back to study in 
in the two twenties and stayed with her for some years. She was a great help to them, also to myself during those years. Every time I come to Jamaica, Horizon Park was a must. We had to visit Aunt Rebe, stay with her for some time. October 2018 was the last time I saw her. We had worthwhile conversations on the phone. The most important conversation was the goodness of God. We discussed scriptures and shared experiences. In her final months, I would talk to her every week. We sang the old hymns of faith, read scriptures, and pray. She said to me at one point, Eileen, you must serve the Lord. I assure her, I will, because Jesus is everything to me. Aunt Ray departed this life November 23rd, 2022, and she has left us a legacy of faith in God that will see us through eternity. May her soul rest in peace. Remembering Aunt Rel. In Remembering Aunt Rel, the lyrics of Gramps Morgan, People Like You, comes readily to mind. The first two verses goes like this. If you give a little more than you take, and you try to fix more than you break, if you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain, there's a place for people like you. If you stand up for those down on their knees and lend a voice to those and lend a voice to those who cannot speak, if you shine a little light and give sight to those who have lost their way, there's a place for people like you. There is certainly a place for Aunt Rel because her life was definitely defined by the lyrics of the song. There are many instances of Aunt Rel's help to me and many others. A number of persons were able to improve their lives because of assistance from Aunt Rel. She did not live in a mansion but the doors of her house was always open to anyone who needed a place to stay so that they could further their education or simply because they had nowhere else to go. As I sat here writing this remembrance, I counted 14 persons who I can remember living with Audrey. That's just what I remember. She never asked for boarding or rental and would even provide lunch money and bus fare if you didn't have any. She strongly believed in persons being educated and having a career and would go the extra mile to ensure that persons achieve this. I can think of a number of persons she helped in this way, but I will only highlight a few here. Aunt Rel assisted one person in getting trained and obtaining a commercial license so that he could broaden his options in getting a job and a career. She assisted another in getting training in hospitality management, resulting in this person being currently employed at a prominent hotel. She assisted another in get She opened her home to another who just couldn't go home when they finished work when he finished working his shift that night because he lived some distance away and no taxi was going in that direction at that hour of the night. In my case, when I needed to leave from where I was living, 
and I called on Frel and asked her if I could come and live with her. Without hesitation, she said, sure, and I was there the next day. Antrell has always been there for me. She assisted me when I was buying my first car. And was always along for the ride as long as she was able, whenever I was going to the country. As a matter of fact, on my first trip to the country after purchasing said car, I remember coming down Spur Tree Hill and there was a long line of traffic as there was a truck crawling at the head of the line, so I had to be using the brake a lot. Near to the end of the hill, the opportunity came for me to overtake the truck, and I did that. However, when I pulled back in and tried to use the brake, alas, there was no brake, and I shouted, Andre, Andre, I have no brake. Then I put to the side of the road and engaged the handbrake. We stayed there a while until the brake cooled off and I could move again. We then continued on our journey and arrived safely at Rose Hall. There I spoke with Paige, our trusted driver, who explained that I should have changed to a lower gear. Poor me did learn to drive and get my license on a standard car. Know how to gear up and gear down but never did know where the L in the automatic car stand for. In another instance, I was working with this company and they merged with another and made persons redundant. They then rehired some persons and wanted to rehire me in a position that, was, that I was originally hired in and not the one I was in at the time of the merger. I did not want to accept the position. Daddy said, Andrea, take the job. It is easier for you to get a job when you're in a job. <laughs> Andrea said, Andrea, you can't let people walk all over you. If you don't want to take the job, don't take the job. <laughs> Needless to say, I did not take the job. As I had Andrea's support, so I knew I would have a roof over my head and I wouldn't starve. Yeah. For part of the time that I lived with Antrell, Dan and Barbara also lived there. Antrell taught us a lot of things. She taught us the value and importance of family. My Im immediate family thinks I go to a lot of funerals. I don't necessarily agree, but Antrell may have had a hand in this as she believed in showing her support when any family member close friend or relative of a close friend had passed. If any of the persons mentioned above passed, I would get a call. Andrea, so and so that a country, you go a funeral? One weekend, someone was, had died and was being buried and Andrea wanted to go to the funeral. But I just didn't want to come to country that weekend. And I told her I wasn't going. A few moments later, I got a call. And it was Daddy reminding me of who had helped me to purchase my first car. Needless to say, I was in country that weekend. Antrell taught us to share and she took care. If she got one mango or one apple, it would be coming home and it would be shared amongst the four of us. After retiring from St. Aloysius Primary, Antrell taught at St. Diego Cathedral Prep for a while. I was working a short distance away. Almost every evening after leaving school, she would stop to check on me. I was pregnant at the time. And if it was Guinea season, rest assured she would be walking with a bunch or two that my friends started to look forward to her visits. Someone told me when she died, someone said recently that when they came to NHT, they thought that Antrell was my mother. She taught us how to stand up for ourselves and to respond to persons in a way that they didn't even realize that you weren't being too pleasant. Andre loved to read, and I guess I developed my reading, my love for reading from her as she had left a whole bookcase of books at Rose Hall when she moved to Kingston. 
which I finished reading by the time I moved to Malvern, sometimes with the aid of a flashlight. I can also remember while living at Rose Hall that when Aunt Well was visiting in the summer, she would come with a lot of exercise books, pencils, sharpeners, etc. But she never gave me any because they were for the children in the community. Time will not allow me to go into all the assistance that Aunt Well gave to me and to others and all that she taught me. So I will pause here and take the time to thank some persons on behalf of myself and the Alexander family. I want to say thanks to Carmen, that's Aunt Lou's daughter, who always went with Aunt Rel to Cape Page when he had, she had to go to clinic, to Mrs. Francis, her neighbor, who always checked on Aunt Rel and, and assisted her when she couldn't manage. Personally, I want to say special thanks to Barbara, Diane and Kurt, who have always been there to support me in one way or another, whether at late night in the emergency room, regular hospital visits, or any other thing. To Ben, who though was not physically present in Jamaica, was always supportive with her phone calls, her WhatsApp messages, and was always willing when I asked her to purchase stuff for Entrell. Thank you all for coming and for your support in whatever way you extended it. And for those not here who may be watching, thank you all, may God bless you. Rest in peace, Entrell, and may light perfectly shine upon you. Amen. Amen. This is from Ben. It is incumbent on me to share a few re re reflections on Miss Relmara Alexander, affectionately called Miss Rel. The Alexanders and the Millers have shared a bond for over 50 years, and this remains intact. As a true Alexander, one could always rely on her to assist whenever there was a need. Her nieces, grandnieces, and grandnephews can attest to this. Like them, I cannot forget her assistance when I had an urgent need regarding my brother Sam, and she willingly provided a solution. I recall visits with her at Horizon Park, Park when we would reflect on memories of Rose Hall and even enjoy a sweet sop, which is my favorite fruit. My husband Delroy and I share with the family at this time, but let, but let the fond and unforgettable memories sustain you. Miss Rell, we will remember your kindness, the many experiences and wide words shared with those whom you interacted and taught. If we emulate many of her attributes for the betterment of our lives, then her life's work would not be in vain. Your rest is well earned. Good afternoon. A tribute to Ms. Renmeyer Alexander from the management staffs of Orange and Clark Nursing Home. We must first show our appreciation to the family members of Miss Alexander for choosing our nursing home as a way from home. She was admitted December 17, 2021. Miss Alexander, she was a pleasant individual with a charming personality, she always requesting what she would like to eat. One of, one of those requests was hair and bun. When I asked, she loves hand bun, her reply was that her parents did have a bakery yes. where they specialized in baking and bun. Yes. She always talking about the children in her community. Back in the earlier day, how she always invite them to Sunday school and teach them about God. Yes. Miss Alexander was a fun, loving person who gave us jokes and make us laugh. She always speak proper English, which speaks our teaching profession. Over the 
past few months, her late her health began to deteriorate, and she passed it away November the 23rd, 2022. We at the nursing home express our condolences to the family and friends of Miss Alexander. We pray you will find peace and comfort in such a difficult time. God bless you all. We miss her so much. Take care of us, Miss Alexander. Sleep in paradise. for the late Relmyra Elestina Alexander, Miss Rel, Miss Ali. When we lose someone we love, it seems that time stands still. What moves through us is a silence, a quiet sadness, a longing for one more day, one more word, one more touch. Miss Red, your life gave us memories too beautiful to forget. Relmyra Elestina Alexander, Miss Red, was born to parents Zeta and William Alexander on the 14th of August, 1938, 84 years and three months ago. She was born in the district of Rosal in the parish of St. Elizabeth. She was the sixth of eight children, two boys and six girls. Miss Rell's parents were very strict and the children were properly brought up. The home was a happy one. The siblings were closely bonded and this happened from childhood and continued through their adult years. And it never changed. The girls were sheltered and protected by their two brothers who sandwiched them. There was the firstborn, Franklin. Then there was all of six girls. Then came Alvin, the last son and the wash belly. This family was a mother family in the community of Rosa, and they were well respected by all. Yes. The T's had to be crossed oh, yes. and all the I's dotted. That was the Alexander family. <laughs> Miss Rell attended Rose Hall Elementary School from age seven to 15 years. After leaving school, she did private studies at the said Rose Hall School, the first, second, and third Jamaica local examination. She was successful in all three examinations, and she got a job as a probation teacher after she passed the third Jamaica local examination. Miss Rell excelled in school. She passed all the relevant examinations. She was also successful in the entrance examination for Teachers College and was accepted at the Bethlehem Moravian Teachers College to be trained as a teacher. She spent three years in training and passed with flying colors. Miss Rell developed the love for teaching as her elder sister, Hazelyn Alexander, was a teacher. And being the closely knitted family they were, she would help and guide Miss Rell along. Miss Rell entered the teaching profession, dedicated to assist young people achieve their potentials. 
She started her illustrious career at Epping Forest All Age School in St. Elizabeth. She then moved to Morningside All Age in St. Elizabeth. She then must have said to herself, enough of St. Elizabeth. So she moved to Rock River School in Clarendon. She must have then said, enough of rural schools. Kingston, here I come. Miss Rell then moved to St. Aloysius Primary School in Kingston. This is the school where she spent the rest of her teaching career until she retired. Miss Rell knew that teaching was her most substantial post. Therefore, she delivered unreservedly, not just from books, but from her heart. She always say, what we have done for ourselves die with us, but what we have done for the children and others live on. Yes. Saint Aloysius, she was the scout master for the school, boy scout. She gave the scout group the opportunity to travel to St. Vincent, and this they were very proud of. Her performance as a visual classroom teacher, a motivator, a counselor, a confidant, extended beyond the boundaries of equipping students with academic skills. She added rich value to the history of the school, and she left a legacy of hard work, unselfishness, and sincerity in the sphere of her, all her endeavors. Teaching was Miss Rell's life. Yes. She loved that profession. Mm -hmm. She did not stay away from the classroom after her retirement. Mm -hmm. Instead, she got a job at St. Jacob Prep, where she taught for some time before she finally vacated the classroom. Her life and work speak for themselves. Miss Rell will be cherished and remembered always as one who gave selfless of her time, her talent, and treasures to the glory of God. Miss Rell was a confirmed member of this church, St. Mary's Anglican Church. She was a very active member in church and she was an ardent member. As a child, she attended Sunday school at Rosal Elementary School. Yes. That's where the Sunday school used to be held. Yes. It was usually taught by the teachers who taught at the school, as most teachers were Anglicans back in those days. Yes. Miss Rell built her house at Horizon Park, Spanish Town. And that's where she lived all her adult life. Her home had an open door to her siblings and her family members. Miss Rell did not have any children of her own, but she cared for so many. Her home was there for her relatives and to accommodate, accommodate them during their high school and tertiary years. She never, never refused one of them. It was a joy to offer that assistance. She cared for them all as if they were her biological children. There are some of her relatives who benefited from her love and care. And I'll just name a few. Andrea and Kurt and Diane and Barbara, Patrick and Dwayne. I know they are forever grateful for the help, the accommodation that she gave to them while they were studying. Yes. Miss Ray lived in Spanish town and she worked in Kingston. Therefore, she had to travel daily but after she retired, and as she advanced in age, 
and her health declined. She was encouraged by her caring and only surviving brother Alvin to return to Rose Hall, St. Elizabeth, to the family home to live. She was not willing at first, very stubborn, but in the end, she complied. This brought so much joy to her brother Alvin, as he would be better able to supervise and give her all the care necessary as she was only, would be only a few minutes drive away. Miss Rell spent some time at the family home in Rose Hall. Their decision was taken to move her to the Orange Clark Nursing Home in Southfield, St. Elizabeth. The best care was taken of her at this home, and she enjoyed good fellowship there for the final year of her life. The visits were many from all those who made the numerous trips and bought and brought all that was necessary for her to be comfortable in her final days. Thumbs up to you all. You know yourselves, and I know you are satisfied that you played your part well. Miss Rell recognized that and in the final week of her life, when her only surviving brother Alvin and wife Jenny visited her, she looked at her brother Alvin and said to him, here I quote, thank you for taking care of me. Those were her last words to brother Alvin. He said he did not see her in the flesh, again. Miss Rell has left this earthly tabernacle on Wednesday, the 23rd of November, 2022. It is said that death is harvest time. It is harvest time and Miss Rell is gone to reap the good fruits she sowed during her time here on earth. We are sad and we are overwhelmed with grief. We are mourning, but the impact she made in this world gave us comfort. And we thank her immensely for touching so many lives. Miss Red is predeceased by parents and several siblings, several siblings, one brother and six sisters. She sadly missed, but lovingly remembered by brother Alvin and wife Jenny. Three nieces, Eileen, Beverly, and Andrea. Grandnieces, grandnephews. Denny, the driver, and the mover on person with Miss Red at all times. He never frowned. Good friend, Miss Francis, who helped in her sickness while at Horizon Park, Spanish Town. Other relatives, friends, and well-wishers. Miss Rell, we could have 20 more years with you, but it is not to be. Peace will be thy rest. Relmyra Elistina Alexander, you are blooming in our hearts, and we will never, it will never fade away. Rest in the arms of the Lord, and may your spirit live on. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I guess some of you must be wondering, who is that? <laughs> I'm Beverly, Mars Franklin's daughter. I'm just here to give a rendition for, well, Aunt Rel is gone. So I'm just here to comfort the family. And I'm here 
sub supported me is my church family from the Break and Seventh-day Adventist Church. And also my husband is also here. And from the church, they, want, they send their condolences from the church, members of the church board, which I'm a part of, the pastors of the church, Pastor O'Neill Montague. We have music there at church today, so we don't have much support today, but they send their love. Amen. So I'm just going to sing a song. So long I've searched for life's
Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord. For to this end Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We brought nothing into the world, and we take nothing out. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. The eternal God is our refuge and underneath or the everlasting arms. We turn to our programs. With faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the body of our sister Ramayla for burial. Our sister was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore with confidence pray to God our Heavenly Father the giver of life, that he will raise her to perfection in the company of the saints. All of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. By baptism in his death, we were buried together with him. So that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him by likeness to death, so shall we be united with him by likeness to his resurrection. On the day of her baptism, Ralmira was incorporated into Christ. On the day of Christ's coming, may she be clothed with glory. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our sister Ranmira. We thank you for giving her to us, her family and friends to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence, we may continue on our course on earth until by your call, we are reunited with those who have gone before, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Him, <clears throat> grace is thy faithfulness. <laughs>
Jesus Christ, you have given us a true faith and a sure hope. Strengthen this faith and hope in us and all our days, that we may live as those who believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Is it for the The Spirit of the Lord, God, is upon me. Oh, a, reading of the, a reading from the Word of God written in Isaiah chapter 61, beginning at verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord, God, is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good, good news to the absurd to bid the unbroken heart, to proclaim the liberty of the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord, favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of the morning, the mantle of praise instead of the faint spirit. They will be called oaths of righteousness, the plant of the Lord to display his glory. The word of the Lord. Good afternoon, everyone. A reading from the Word of God written in St. John chapter 11, beginning at verse 21. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know not even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whosoever lives by believing in me will never, lie, live, will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that thou art the Messiah, the Son of God, who is come into this world. The word of the Lord.
Death is not the end for those who are faithful followers of Jesus. A better life is beyond the grave. Death is not the end for those who are followers of Jesus. A better life beyond the grave awaits them. In St. John 11, 21 through to 27, Martha heard that Jesus was coming and she ran up to meet him. She expressed her regrets about him not being there earlier so as to prevent her brother Lazarus from dying. But she believed that even though Lazarus was dead, that Jesus was still able to bring her brother back to life. We have no control over our allotted lifespan. We may die young, we may die at middle age, or we may live to a blessed age like Ralmyra. We don't know. Neither can we predict when we are going to die. But one thing is certain, and that is death. Yes. But thank God, Jesus has the power over death yes. and the grave. Amen. And that is why he was able to assure Martha with these words, your brother will rise yes. again. Jesus was able to give Martha this assurance because Lazarus was not just a friend of Jesus. Lazarus also was a follower of Jesus Christ. And Martha's response affirms Lazarus's faith. I know he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Only those who die in Christ will rise to live eternally with Jesus in the last day. Ramiro was a faithful follower of Jesus as many of you have accounted for and has attested. She was not only committed to her biological family, but also to her church family. And even though in her latter years when she was not able to move as when she was younger, her love for God did not wane as those from the orange elderly home could attest. She remained faithful to her God to her end. And her death has left a void that no one else and nothing else on earth will be able to fill. But hear Jesus' comforting words. Words that were said to Martha and words that are extended to those who mourn today. I am the resurrection and I am the life those who believe in me yes. even though they die they will live and anyone who lives and believes in me will never die then Jesus asks Martha an important question of faith which is asked of us even today do you believe this? Do you believe in the resurrection of the dead, those who die in Christ? 
Like Martha, I hope we'll be able to say, yes, Lord, I believe. Ralmira's work and contribution to society will always be remembered. She did fight a good fight. And although some persons say she was stubborn, she was stubborn in giving up on her God, and so she remained faithful to God to the end. And now, Primera is free, free from all the troubles, yes. all the trials, all the cares of this life. Well, Myra is at rest. And the question we need to ask ourselves today is, where will we be when this earthly life is over? This is a decision we all have to make. I can't make for you and you can't make for me. It is a personal decision. And I'm sure, based on our tributes, that you'd love to see Ralmira again. This is indeed possible. But it is going to be dependent upon the quality of our relationship with Jesus Christ. We can't live any and any all whole and think it all right. It not go all right at all. Because if the relationship with Jesus Christ is not a faithful one, ask Ralmira, forget it. And so I ask a question today. Do we love? Do we trust? And do we believe and have confidence in Jesus Christ like Mary and Martha? Are we prepared to run to Jesus when we are faced with the varying challenges of life? Or do we look for answers elsewhere. Jesus is the answer for all the whole world today. Above him there is no other because Jesus is the way. When Jesus beckons us to him, will we go? Or will we run away and try to hide like Jonah? There is no hiding place down here. But since we know that death is sure, but we don't know when we are going to die, it is necessary that we make provision for our future residence while we still have the opportunity to do so. Because there is no repentance in the grave. When we did, we can't ask for God's forgiveness. But when we are alive, we can do so. We know that those who are faithful to God all their lives will one day hear Jesus say, Well done, yes. the good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your Lord. Amen. You ever finish a good piece of work? Mm -hmm. And when you're done, everybody say, Lord, you do good. Yes. How does that make you feel? Good. Only those who are in a faithful relationship with Jesus Christ are going to hear well done. Yes. The good and faithful servant enter into the joy oh, yeah. of your Lord. Oh, yes. I say to those who are saddened today, and those 
doesn't that feel like crying? Go ahead and cry. Because tears are a language yes. that God understands. Yes, Even Jesus cried. He cried over Jerusalem. And he cried at the grave of Lazarus, his friend. Therefore, as we lay Ralmira to rest today, and recall all her kind deeds, her happy laughter, and all the lives that she had touched. Let us remember, death is not the end. It's a transition which all faithful followers of Jesus will experience. The company of the saints are waiting to welcome her into the mansion that Jesus has gone before to prepare for only the righteous. So Ralmira is gone, but not forgotten as she continues to live in your hearts. There are so many things around you and what you have achieved that speaks to her. So she lives on in you. Let us therefore seek God's guidance yes. for our daily lives and allow God to direct our steps that we may look forward with confidence to a life beyond the grave after this earthly life has ended. Amen. 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 Let us all stand. <clears throat> In the assurance of eternal life given at baptism, <clears throat> let us proclaim our faith and say, I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered on the conscious Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Blessed be 
the Holy Spirit, the enabler and sustainer of those who seek for grace. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Grant us, Lord, the wisdom and the grace to use aright the time that is left to us here on earth. Lead us to repent of our sins, the evil we have done and the good we have failed to do. And strengthen us to our follow the steps of your Son in the way that leads to the fullness of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our sister Elmira, who was reborn by water and the spirit in holy baptism. Grant that her death may recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led and the way and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. We'll have the hymn, Sing the Wondrous Love of Jesus. During the singing of this hymn, a collection will be taken for the Saint Mary's family. Oh.
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. You rescue Christ to your servant and man. You are saints with the sorrow and pain are no more. Neither sign for life everlasting. Let us commend our sister Almira to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Deliver your servant, Romara, O sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil, and set her free from everyone, that she may rest with your saints in eternal habitation, where the Father and the Holy Spirit do live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Romara. Acknowledge we beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, in the blessed rest of eternal everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in your life. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. Lord is risen. Let us go forth in a 
take care of the pot. Both this, our sister Romero, and we ourselves, 
may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life, grant us, we humble pray, from the death of Christ to the life of righteousness, that when we depart this life, we may rest in you, and at the resurrection receive that blessing which your well beloved son shall then pronounce. Sorry, God, sorry. Come, you bless them. Receive the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning. Grant this, O merciful Father, through Jesus Christ. Rest eternal, grant to her, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine on her. May she and all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. The Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord make his face to shine upon her and be gracious to her. The Lord lift up his countenance upon her and give her peace. Turn out.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and dominion, majesty and power, both now and forever.
as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen.